Blessings. Shalom fam. Welcome to the channel. For those who do not know, my name is Crystal. I hope you guys are having a blessed Wednesday. So I've been meditating on this dream for a few days and I was just going over it and the Lord was speaking to me through it. So I'm going to get into the word. Um, this dream I actually had in, on October 25th of 2019. Um, this has to do regards to the prodigals. The prodigals have returned home. Whoever this is for, you will know. Um, this is for um, the prodigals who are listening. It could be for two and or the ones who are standing and waiting for them to return. Okay, the dream. Sorry, I'm just looking at my tablet so you'll see a, a light glaring on me here. In a college setting um, with a girl going to a party, she drank. I ended up smoking a joint, but joint is marijuana. But no one gave it to me. It was my own. I never bought it off anyone. It just appeared. I could not finish it as it was not for me anymore. I said I am not that person anymore. I applied for college. I got accepted to this big university as it was all paid for, my tuition, etc. The paper said I started on January 1 to 4 uh, to do such and such. And then again from January 5th. And then it was a question mark. I don't remember. It just said that. I forgot the class. But um, when we got there, um, there were all people were all sitting in wheelchairs and everyone was wearing robes. The teacher goes to start a discussion about a topic in the classroom and a student right away pulls the Bible out and starts to compare it from the normal teaching, the word of God, like to connect to make sure that it was valid. Whatever the teacher was saying, the student wanted to compare it um, to the Bible. The teacher says, not yet. You are going too fast. And besides, I don't even have my Bible. So keep that in mind. So the teacher is a believer. And then the teacher says, don't get ahead. Then the student starts talking about it. And it was interesting. The student then says, you have a laptop. So he says, okay, fine. And pulls out the laptop. And they start. The, that was the end of the dream. Okay, so break down some scriptures and the interpretation, just how God led me. That's how I'm going to go for it. Sorry if the phone is ringing. So the school, the college, and the university. Symbolic that God wants to bring you up to another level. Spiritually or naturally, that is needed for your life's purpose. Hang on, I'm going to pause it for a second. Sorry, those spammers calls are crazy. Okay, where did I leave off? So the party represents the world, its sinful desires. That's me explaining why I was smoking the joint, the marijuana. So smoking the joint on my own was my own doing. No one forced me to do it. I chose it on my own free will. But because I could not finish it as it was not for me anymore, I changed my life around, as I said in the dream, as I was not that person anymore. Sorry, the glare, but I don't care. So Ephesians 4, 22 to 24, you were taught in the regard to your former way of life to put your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds and to put on a new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. God is saying that he is bringing you up to another level, both physically and spiritually through his teachings you chose to give up the worldly life and desires so because you repented and chose to be obedient he is going to elevate you my back's getting all hot thank you lord getting accepted to this big university and everything was paid for at some point you are, are you were already at a higher place with god before you turned away from him and went back into the world God is allowing you to continue to be at the stage to keep moving forward in him. Especially if you have a God-ordained spouse that you are waiting for. God needs you to be at the same level. He will do it quickly. Um, you cannot be unequally yoked. That would, that's what he is saying. God is going to give you the tools that you need. Jesus paid the price 
That is why that is why everything was paid for. Colossians 1.14 God's Son Jesus paid the price for our sins and made us free. Yes, God has forgiven us. The paper that I had in my hand with the dates January 1 to 4 and January 5th, this paper is a writing that is the Word of God. God's date, it, it 1 to 4 is equal to 5, and then January 5th. So God was talking about the number 5. The number 5 symbolizes God's grace, goodness, and favor towards humans. God is going to give you the grace that you need to carry out His will for your life. I forgot the class, but when I got there, we were sitting in wheelchairs and robes. You don't know where you are going, but you are trusting God. The wheelchair is a symbol of a weakness, sign of overwhelming feeling of helplessness, restriction, emotional and physiological dependency on something you need. You cannot function or do anything without it. You are totally dependent on it. You sitting in a wheel or the person sitting in a wheelchair, you can still uh, you are still weak as you have been a uh, a while since you were close to God. You are just coming out of the world. All that you have been through, you are now truly dependent on God. You know that you cannot function or do anything without Him in your life. It is like a life lesson learned. You know, never to go and do those things again, walking away from God and making bad choices that you wanted to do, making decisions on your own, learning from your mistakes the robes fine weave and material symbolize wealth and or provenance only the wealthy could afford fine robes in the parable of the prodigal son the repentant son who returned to his father literally wearing rags given the best robe and a ring clearly signifying that he was re-accepted as a member of the family and a son you have returned back to the father praise god you are eager to learn, eager to learn again, coming back stronger than you were before. You fell into the world and away from God. Because of all these life lessons learned, you know that you will do anything for God and that you will not never be deceived again. So that anything that is thrown to you by the word of God is in, as in the dream. Whenever the teacher was discussing to the student right away and pulled the Bible as you were, the person was comparing it to the normal teaching. This is meaning that the teacher was a normal man. They were a believer in God. But whoever comes to you and talks to you about the word, you are going to compare it to the word of God. You are going to make sure that it is truly lines up what God is saying. You are firm if someone is not prepared and they tell you that they do not have the information, you will probably tell them in their place and tell them where to find it. No excuses. Watch, it's probably spam risk again. <sighs> Hang on a second. Call from Kentucky, Idaho. It is another spam. Hang on, I'm going to pause it. Okay. Sorry, you guys. These prodigals are serious coming back to God. They are not going to be playing around anymore when it comes to God. They are not going to sugarcoat anything anymore for anyone. They have been silent for too long. They were deceived before. They have learned their lesson. They will do anything in their power to never end up like that again. These prodigals are going to be coming back with a fire for God like I've never experienced before. John 15, 5, I am the vine and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. And then the Lord wanted me to read the story of the prodigal that comes from Luke 15, 11 to 32, 11 to 32, sorry. And I'm reading from the Amplified Version. Then he said, a certain man had two sons, the younger of them inappropriately, 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 sorry, said to his father, father, give me the share of that property that falls to me. So he divided the estate between them. A few days later, the young son gathered together everything he had that he had and traveled to a distant country. And there he wasted his fortune in reckless and immoral living. Now, when he had spent everything, a severe famine occurred in that country. And he began to do, uh, uh, sorry, and he began to do without and be in need. So he went and forced himself on one of the citizens of that country who sent him into his field to feed pigs. He would have gladly eaten the carbon pod 
that the pigs were eating, but they could not satisfy his hunger, and no one was giving anything to him. But when he finally came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired men have more than enough food while I am dying here of hunger? I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I have no longer worthy to be called your son. Just treat me like one of your hired men. My God, my chest, Lord. So he got up and came to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was moving with compassion for him. He ran and embraced him and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servant, Quickly, bring him up in the best robe for our guest to of honor, and put it on him, and give him a ring for his hand and sandals on his feet. Oh my goodness, I'm not going to cry. I just feel the Lord, sorry. And bring the fattened calf and slaughter it, and let us invite everyone and feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was as good as dead, and now he is alive again. He was lost, and now he is found. So they began to celebrate. Now his older son was in the field, and when he returned and approached to the house, he heard music and dancing. So he summoned one of the servants and began asking, What is this celebration meant? And he said to him, Your brother has come, and your father has killed the fattened calf, because he has received him back to safe and sound. But the elder brother became angry and deeply resentful, and was not willing to go in. And his father came out and began pleading with him. But he said to his father, Look, how many years have I served you? I have never neglected or disobeyed your command. You have let never let you have never given me so much as a young goat, so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this other son of yours arrived, who has devoured your estate with a moral woman, you slaughter that and flatten for him. The father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But it will be fitted to celebrate and rejoice, for this brother of yours was as good as dead and has begun to live. He was lost and he has been found. So praise God. Um, they have truly returned back to God. Sorry, it's dark in here. I don't have a light. Um, if you are a prodigal, this is what saying, God's saying. If you're a prodigal and you're watching this, God is very pleased with you. He loves you so very much and he has great, great plans for you. And he gave me, and this is a very popular scripture, Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, to give you plans and not to harm you, to give you hope and a future. And that is the end of the word. I hope this was a blessing to somebody. Sorry, I'm just turning this off here. I hope this was a blessing to somebody. And yeah, um, I'm happy. I just felt the Lord all over it. Um, just feeling with love. I almost crying because I can just feel him just, yeah. But congratulations. Um, that's awesome. You know, we all want everybody, you know, we want those that we love and to come back to God and serve him and they're coming back with fire. So be prepared. Um, again, they're not going to be fully with God. Like they're going to still be weak, but they have a fire for him. Like they've never had before. And it's, it's somewhat kind of like starting all over again, but, um, being with God, they're still going to be higher with him, but, um, but like still trying to get over that that uh, a sinful nature like they could be um still drinking or you know swearing or whatever the case may be like they're not going to be 100 percent complete but they have returned back to the father and they know that you know they learned from their mistakes and they'll do anything in the power to serve god how it's how that it, it was truly meant to be you know uh, i hope i'm making sense to you guys but i love you guys and i'll talk to you soon um I'll probably be doing that other teaching there in a little while. So I love you guys and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Shalom.